so I thought about it. I think I'm gonna put this on that 37 inch Weber kettle today because it, I wanna show you what that thing can do. Most people don't have one. And the only reason why I have one, I paid 500 bucks for it at a garage sale, so I'm gonna use it. But the bottom line is, 222s will make up a kettle bigger. 222s, you got 44 instead of 37, so again, why are you paying two grand for that? But I'm gonna show you what that can do because believe it or not, it's one heck of a smoker. So we're gonna put this on today. We're gonna grill some chicken, we're gonna grill some ribs, and we're really not, we're kinda grill smoking. I'm gonna show you what this thing can do. Flavor's amazing. It's gonna put a very nice smoke ring onto these ribs. So let's get all this washed up. I'm gonna show you how to season all this, and then we're gonna go out to the cooker. See you in a minute. Okay, so we got our chicken cut up. I cut it in halves, as you can see. I like, th these are small chickens, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut this in uh, halves because they're not big chickens. They weigh probably about almost three pounds, believe it or not. I like the smaller chickens because they're, they're tender. They're, they're small birds. We have our ribs here, okay? They're not very large ribs. They're a nice rack of ribs. So the first thing we're gonna do, let's start getting some of this stuff seasoned. So let's put this guy off to the side right here. And the first thing we're gonna start with to season this is cooking spray. This is a regular vegetable cooking spray, so just give it a good spray. Flip it over, give it another good spray. I don't trim too much on these ribs because they're cooking over direct heat. All that fat's gonna render down into the fire and then we're gonna get render down a lot of that fat that's on there too. So I don't really worry too much. Like that chunk right there, I'll leave that on. That'll just fall off into the, into the cooker. And one thing with the ribs, before I start seasoning these things, when you actually put these onto the cooker, you'll fold in this last piece here. So this is a piece here that is just really the end piece of the, the whole rib. I'll show you how to trim this off afterwards, but if you don't want to trim them, tuck it in. See how I'm tucking that in? So you gotta tuck it in like so. And when it hits the cooker, you'll go that way with it. And just tuck this little piece in, and you're gonna act like you're trimming them, but you're really not gonna trim them. So you'll tuck that in there. And see that difference right there? Look at that. See, you're just tucking it in. When you do tuck it in, let's flip this over. Keep it one hand clean just in case I have to operate my camera. When you do tuck it in, it's tucked under the bottom. So this thin half of this rib, this, this piece right here that most people burn up, since you tuck it in, it kind of makes it even with the rest of the rib. So it's not as thin. So what you're doing is you're, you're kind of just making it a bit thicker and you're protecting it. So this way when you cook these ribs and you go direct with them the first side, they're kind of gonna cook in. Uh, afterwards, we're gonna cut that off, we're gonna trim them up, and this is how you're gonna make your, your rib tips. So we're gonna show you how to make rib tips afterwards. So let's get it on. Let's get some seasoning on. This is a rub that I made. And the reason why I sprayed with oil, I did the one side, I didn't do this side, okay? This is a rub that I made. It's actually three parts garlic powder, three parts onion powder, one part paprika, uh, and one part black pepper, and one part cumin. I just made it myself. And experiment, make some rubs. I like this rub, it's a good starter. And I usually put this on everything. So we're gonna start lightly. Now the reason why I sprayed them does two things again. You gotta get this rub to stick to them. Go light, and again, we're not gonna rub anything in. Go to that part right here. I don't use mustard, some people do. To get everything to stick, I use a nice little spray, and I don't over season. So get that little pocket up under here. I just kind of rub it in. Some people cut that off. They say it cakes up under here. I don't cut off anything. Let me tell you something. The way I grew up in my house, very poor, nothing goes to waste. 
ever. All right, like I said, you'll tuck that piece in like that. I think you'll start with the rub over here again. Dry rub, this is called a dry rub. And then we're gonna mop it. So in our last video, we did a mop and I'll put that up. So this way you could just see the portion of the mop. Let's get that on there. Get it all nice and marinated up. I don't use a thick rub. And like I said, if you don't rub it in, it'll be better. You'll be able to tuck that in, tuck that in, and that's how that's gonna sit on the cooker. And that's what you usually see in your butcher section, where they season the meat for you. It's already nice and dark like that. We'll fold that half here. I'm trying to keep one hand dry. Fold that over. Bring that right back. And we're good. So when these are gonna go, now I'm marinating these for tomorrow because I got an early cook. It could be early, it could be late. I got a hectic schedule, so I'm not sure, but I'm marinating tonight. And it's okay to let that rub sit in overnight. Again, come back, spray them. Flip to the other side, spray them. Put that last piece on the end there. And you see why I keep on here dry because I gotta operate the can. And why they're on that one side? Start seasoning. See in that one piece I rub in there? I just kind of rub it under there. That's the only piece I rub, just under that piece of meat there. A little cake up in there. No good. All right, let's get that little piece on the end. Now I go light again with that piece on the end because again, we are folding. So let's fold again, flip that over. That's that. This rub's got a little bit of everything in, and you'll notice down the road, less is more. Less things you put on here, the better off you kind of are. Actually, the better off you are. There's no kind of out. All right, so we're gonna just put that up on here, and fold those up. It'll make it easy to go wrap wrap in your fridge. All right, and then we'll get this tray out of here. And now we have a season set of ribs. And we're gonna get these ribs out of here. My hand, so I'll just give you a look at that. So this way you got a good look at what that looks like. All right, off to the side she goes. And then we're gonna mess with her chicken. Now the reason why I mess with the chicken last is because you can go from ribs to chicken, but you really don't wanna go from chicken to ribs, just from salmonella. So you don't wanna spread anything. So the chicken is the last one that I usually mess with and then I go over to the sink and brush my hands. So let's get the chicken going. Now the rub that I'm using, there's not too much salt in there. Chicken, when it hits the grill, it requires a lot of salt. If you cook with chicken inside, you'll notice it takes a lot less salt. But when it hits that grill, it sweats up, the skin sweats up. So what I do is I, I come in with more salt. And my salt, my rub is not that salty. So again, I spray everything. And the reason why you're spraying everything too, not only do you get the rub to stick, but it's not gonna stick to the grill. So oil the meat, not the grill. So I'm coming in with kosher salt, I did one side. Come in with a little kosher salt here, up under that little wing there. Gotta get up under the arms. And I love going half with these chickens because when the chickens are small like this, and you go half, gives you some leeway time. You know, you don't, you don't have to get out there so quick and start moving things around. 
It keeps that chicken moist and juicy. And that's what you want. All right, so we got the one side. Now we're gonna go with a little rub. This is the same rub I put on the ribs. I just, the only thing I just did was add the salt. There we go. And the grill's gonna do a lot of that work too. If you want that barbecue taste to get in there, and that's gonna be from your coals and your wood. So, if you gotta season the heck out of your meat, guess what? Maybe you're doing something wrong. Because you shouldn't have to drown your meat with a bunch of uh, spices and flavoring. You see how light I am with this? This is just, basically I'm almost missing some spots. And that's done on purpose. Now, where the backbone is here, coming in on the back of the chicken, I try to hit that spot hard, it's all bone. So, it'll get down to that bone. You gotta get through and flavor that meat. And here we go, I forgot the salt, but we're going on with it. I love a lot of salt on the chicken on the barbecue. But if I season this right now on the barbecue, which I'm seasoning this right now. So when you season on a barbecue right now, if I change my mind and said, I don't want to cook this chicken outside, I want to cook it inside, you're going to wind up, I don't really care if you fry it or bake it, it's too much salt. But that grill, once you do it that way, she loves the chicken on the grill, loves the salt. And that's it. We're done. See that? Save your seasonings. Things are expensive. Again, I don't like to waste. So that's it. We're gonna call that a wrap. I'm gonna put this in my fridge and tomorrow we'll be out on the cookers. Right here are a few of my other little friends. Now this is a 55 gallon drum. I keep around here. It's got wood in it. And this is what I wanna pick through all my good stuff. Cherry, oak. And it's all nice and dry. A couple of pieces got wet on top of me opening up the lid, but it's all nice and dry. Got slivers of it, in case you want to put a sliver in there. But we're just gonna get the driest part. Always wear gloves when you're doing this too, because you know, you get hit with a black widow or brown recluse. It's not gonna be good for you. So this is my little hit and drum. I keep 55 gallon containers all around because I store in them charcoal, I burn it down, I store it in here, and it's just always a great thing to have around just to store anything in. So that's just country life for you. Living in the country, you need all this. Let's get back inside. This is a Weber Kettle Ranch right here behind me, 37 inch Kettle Ranch. I'm gonna take you through, I'm gonna show you how to use this thing, show you how to set the wood up. And uh, like I said, I love options. So the more options I have to cook on things, the better off we are. So let's get started. This kettle is a massive cooker with all this space on here. Look at this thing opened up, this is crazy. I mean like, you gotta feed a lot of hungry heads. You got a lot of kids in the house. Most people don't know how to turn this thing into a smoker, cooker, so we're gonna kind of smoke, cook, grill, do a little bit of everything on it today. And this is just, it's a beast. It's got three holes in the bottom. They're set wide open. That's a basically a drip tray for ashes and grease. 
And that's it, very simple, basic thing. And the holes on the top are straight in the top. You can see how well seasoned this thing is. I actually cook on this thing a lot. For all the cookers I have, they use this one a lot. Let me show you a little bit about the way I have my wood set up here. So this is a triangle type of box. So I got cherry, oak, I got a lemon tree in the back. Again, that's red oak over there. And the back is a piece that I've already had uh, burned down, so I, I save everything. So that piece of wood burned down a little bit, we're gonna keep it. Nice part about that piece in the back right there, once I put the lid on this, I'm showing this without the lid, once, I'm sorry, the, the grate. Once I put the grate onto this, what's gonna happen is I got a cool spot in the back here. And this will light up, and this is all the way in the back, and you need your little cool spot. So if I wanna get a little bit more heat back and the, over the coals, I can cook over the coals. If I have, let's say, for example, a hot dog, I can kinda go over this wood part in the back here and kinda place my stuff in the back here. It's still getting a lot of heat, but until this catches on fire, which it will eventually, this will stay as you'll see when I cook on this video. As you see, that piece will stay pretty good in the back there. And this is gonna take a while to burn down and while that's burning, this wood is not igniting. It's just kinda gonna smolder and give us that beautiful smoke. The charcoal's gonna bring the heat. That's gonna be it. That's how you do it. Barbecue, Southern style. Let's get it on. All right. Fire's lit and she's, she's going. So I didn't put the grate on. I didn't put the grate on for a reason. You don't want to burn up your grate. So here's all this fire, right? It's going to take a while to fire up. It's going to be flames coming through it. Then after that, we're going to put this lid on. We're going to stabilize the fire. We're going to get the fire down to where I want it. And uh, this grill has no temperature gauge on it. So I'm kind of, I'm just going on feel and I'm going on experience and probably this fire is going to be going at, we're probably cooking today about 350 to 450 in between there, a 100 degree temperature because the closer you move the meat, the, uh, the hotter it is. The temperature is going to go up when you move it to that nice pile that I made in the back there. So play it by ear, we'll feel it out and most of the grilling is just kind of playing by ear and feeling out and just doing it. And, Time will actually make you an expert. That's about it. That's how I learned it. This is the secrets I'm showing you guys and hope you enjoy it. So we're gonna let this fire up for about 15 minutes. We're gonna put the lid on it. Again, stabilize it. I keep bringing that up. Stabilize the fire. It's very important because if you start burning up your meat, as soon as you hit it on there, the flame's gonna just burn up the meat. It's gonna chew it up. And uh, the fire is gonna love it more than you. All right, grill stabilized. I have these little holes on top here. They're 50% open. I'm gonna kind of judge it as I go along, but I got a nice even fire as you're gonna see right now. Ooh! Let me just turn this fan off so you can hear me. All right, our ribs are going on first. Now you see how I have that fire set up there? She's going nice and easy. And again, this is the rib, so we're gonna fold it in, tuck it. I'm gonna place it right about there. Actually, I want this side on because I want this side, the thicker side, kind of closer to the fire, but we kind of made it all thick, like I said, by turning it. So let's just get it here. And like I said, again, you gotta get that fire on and get, get the lid on and get the fire stabilized because she's getting crazy which you don't want. All right, so our ribs are over here. Fold it in. Oop, backwards. Fold it in. And let's get our chicken going. Chicken halves. Put them around the fire. Hear that wood popping? That's a good sound. Alrighty. Like I said, this grill, she'll feed an army. I try to keep the chicken legs closer to the fire and the breasts away. 
from the fire. The thighs are always going to take a little bit more time to cook. And there you have it. That's our setup. Let's get this thing stabilized. Now I'm going to get those holes down a little bit. Quarter crack them. There you go. Just let it ride. And we'll come check the fire afterwards, see where we're at, but that should pretty much stabilize everything and we're good to go. We're going to take a little peek preview of this. I said keep the lid closed, but normally you want to see how this is going. Ooh, ciao. All right, things are looking good in here. Let that smoke die out. Now, in the back, you see that piece of wood? Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can autofocus in here and get in there. I put some doggies on there in between. So there's a metal tray in there. This will protect them from the fire a little bit. It was cooking a little too hot back there. And this is our ribs and our chicken. Chickens get nice and golden. And we're gonna get our lid closed. All right, come back. We're gonna baste in another hour. See that fire getting crazy? Let's lock it down. All right, sorry about all that shaking, but I have to close it. That's it, see that fire in there? All right, we're gonna take a little time to talk about what our next actions are here. Now that your meat is onto the grill, so these ribs, what I do, is I go into, again, the first uh, hour and a half, I'm gonna baste them. For a chicken, I'm gonna leave it alone. Just let it sweat out. I like crispy skin on chicken, so the temperatures that we're cooking at today, we're gonna get the most crispy chicken. I don't touch the chicken. I put a little spray on there that's gonna crisp up the skin and it's just gonna go nice and easy and render down all that chicken fat. As far as the ribs go, I'm gonna baste them once, hour and a half in. I'm gonna flip them, I'm gonna put another baste on there, I'm just gonna let them go nice and easy. And then I'm going to pull them when they are on the tongue and they're just, they got that right bin. I'll actually pick them up and show you how to feel them to get that right bin, but that's it. I base once and the first hour, then I flip them, then I let them go for, basically they're on here for about three and a half hours uh, to four, depending on how big those ribs are. Those are smaller ribs, so um, we're picturing probably about, I don't know, maybe three hours. But the great part about cooking like this, you're kind of grilling indirect. And then afterwards, the last portion of the cook, we're going to put them on the coals themselves. So we're going to move the coals around, spread them around, and then we're going to actually go right onto the coals with them. Always a good technique. And that's kind of your smoking, grilling, and we'll get a nice little, little, uh, you know, like a, a couple of grill chars on them or grill marks on them between like a char and a mark. That's kind of where they're gonna be. So stick around and we're gonna show you how we get these ribs done. We'll see you soon. All right, we're about an hour and a half in. Put some dogs on here. They're doing pretty good. Like I said, that plate protects them, so they're done. Let's get these off of here. I got nice high heat gloves on. I love these gloves. Now that mop sauce they made the other night, I'm gonna, uh, in my last video actually, I'm gonna put a description in there. Like I said, I'm gonna baste them. Just go on there. I'm not putting any on the chicken because I like my my chicken to be crispy. Seconds here, and that's it. See how my fire is going nice and even. She's not getting too crazy. I'm not gonna mess with this fire because once you mess with the fire, it'll just get it crazy. It's cooking at a good temperature. Leave it alone. Don't mess with it. Get the lid closed. Just gonna show you a quick preview of these ribs. And 
like I said, see how that piece was tucked in there? So it's staying tucked in. All these pieces here, see how they're staying tucked in? They're staying tucked in. Last, you gotta turn these. See them, they stay tucked in, like I said. And see how that fire is getting crazy again? So we might have to move some things around here, but not too crazy. All right. I'm actually gonna mop the back of here. Let's get this going quick. That's why I like the ladle, because you start spritzing stuff and messing around with spray bottles. Psst, come on, who's got time for that? Here we go, close up. Done. All right, here we go. We're gonna check this out. We are in about hour two and a half. And our chicken's looking right. Look at that nice golden chicken. Look at that. Her coals are burning right. I'm bringing the chicken a little bit closer to the fire because our fire is actually getting lower. So we bring everything to the fire. Fire gets lower, bring the food. Bring the ribs and a little closer. Feel that nice juice, moisture in there? I can turn it down so you're basing with its own juice. Let's get them over. Look at that. They still don't have that bin that we're looking for. They're still not done. They're far from done. They need about another hour and a half on here. Cooking nice and easy today. We're rolling. I'm not going to base these. I'm just going to let them roll the rest of the way. That's it. That chicken will be come off of there probably in another 30 minutes. And the chicken will come off first and then we'll do our ribs. That's it. Let's cover her back up. And there she has it. All right, our chicken's three hours in. Let's see what we got going on here. Look at that nice golden chicken. We're gonna pull this. See that chicken? Beautiful. Plate up. Put those guys off of here are moving quick because I don't want that fire to get crazy. Bring these in. See that chicken? You can hear it. Nice and crispy. Let's move these to the side. Let's get this fire stabilized. We're gonna come back out here. I'm gonna move around that fire. And then we're gonna get these ribs cooking directly over that fire. So for right now, what I'm gonna do is take these ribs, they're going right over to the fire. And I'll come back when I put this chicken away. And I'm all mess with them. That should come back to a nice smoky fire. All right, our chicken's inside. Just want you to take a look at this. I just brought it inside. So, just take a look at that. She looks beautiful. I'm not gonna go cut into it now. I gotta get back to these ribs, and then we'll take the ribs off. We'll show you how to cut ribs. We'll show you how to make rib tips, and then we'll be all set. And that'll be that. We'll see you in a second. All right, so we're coming back out here. Like I said, I was gonna readjust this fire. Um, I'm not happy with the position that the fire is in right there. So what I'll do, is I'll readjust the fire. Come on. 
just lift this right up. Get my hands right to the fire with these nice heat gloves. And that's it. See that fire? Picking right back up. Now what we're going to do is put these rings directly over it. Now we're grilling and chilling. Let's get this fire closed up so you don't want to burn, these, burn up these ribs. We'll come back. We'll show you how to finish this off. Now this is what happens when you go directly over the coals. This thing is, she's smoking like a choo-choo train. And that's what you want. You're not burning anything up. You gotta be very careful. After we have this, we kind of grill it up just a little bit. We're gonna pull it back from those coals. And then we're gonna let it just chill out and get nice and tender. Then we're gonna pull them. And we're gonna cut them. Then we're gonna show you how to make some rib tips. Stick around. All right, let's see what we got going on. A lot of smoke. Flip it off the smoke. You see those ribs? Let's just get a little visual here. They're doing really, really good. That's what you're looking for. Right there. directly over that fire. I'm gonna char them up for a second. Look at that. Look at that. There, they're looking right. And as the fire gets crazy, Fly fire. No other way. All right, let's get out of the way. Let's shut this down. Stabilize our fire back. We're good to go. Whoops. Here we have it. And you can see that fire is jumping right through those holes. Look at that. Let's shut this light off. And you can see that puppy jumping right through those holes. It'll calm down. I'll see you in a second. All right, we are approaching our number four hour. Let's see where we are. Oh, look at all that smoke. Oof, got to back up out of there. But she is looking good. Look at that. Look at those ribs cooking. They are looking right. I'm gonna pick these up and feel them and see if the meat, if I got the right bins on here. I still don't have it yet. I want those that, that meat pulling away from the bone a bit more, but you can see it. She's popping through or coming up. We're gonna let these go for a little bit more. We're about at that four hour mark. Another 20 minutes, we'll be at that four hour mark, 25 minutes. And we'll see what we got there. So I'm gonna close her up and we'll come back. I'll see you in a second. All right, we're at four hours, 15 minutes. 
right, let's see what we got going on. I feel my ribs are about ready. So this is what I do. I pick them up this way. I do the bin test. They're about ready to break. And that's about where I pull them. Then I rest them for 20 minutes. So with no further ado, let's get them pulled. You can see that I folded that rip tip in and it's still folded in. It wouldn't fit in a tray without it folded in. Let's take a look at that. Nice, perfect. Get out of the light. Nice, perfect picture. It's at nighttime. They look good. Let's just get a shot here where they're sitting. Look at that. I don't wrap my ribs. When I cook on a direct cooker and I cook direct like this so smoke like this half direct half indirect mostly I never wrap them because I just feel uh, I like the texture it's a down south type of thing a style of how we eat our ribs down south no wrap ribs and uh, I like that tug a little bit of tug some bite and I love it we'll see you inside all right, that was a beautiful cook. I enjoy, I, I love cooking, I do. Rack of ribs. Now I rested these and I'm cutting them. So here we go, we're gonna do the cut. I rest these in uh, plastic wrap, by the way. They come off the grill, I plastic wrap them, right? I want you guys to see this rack of ribs. So I cut these in half and I want you to see that. Get a look there. And a nice little smoke ring here. This bright light might be affecting me a little bit, but let's cut them up. So this is what I do. Those pieces that we folded in, they're there. Rib tips. See that? Three nice pieces. Well, let's go this way. And that's a rib tip. My tray here. That piece that I folded in, you can see it's all just folded in. Look at that. See it? It's bent over. So put your knife on the side here. Start right down with it. And now, bang, bang, bang. Rib tips. Cut your ribs. These are kind of going on an angle, so we're going that way. Go that way, and now you got your ribs. Look at that. Let's take a pit master break right now. Take a bite of this. Look at that. I love this piece right here. That's the flap that most people cut off. Let's see if I can get a good shot of that. That's the flap, the little flap that we were talking about rubbing on there. Look at that. That pulls right off. Mm. My favorite bite. Really good. Let's get a bite of the rib. Look at that bite. Pulls away. Very nice from the bone. It's got a little tub. But that is an excellent rib. They're not dried out. You can see the juice. They're very juicy. And that's just a dynamite rib. Look at that. That's pit master privilege right there. I hate to eat in front of you, but it's gotta get done. All right, let me get finished cutting up these ribs. Oh, I put that on top of there. Cooking is my family. I'll show you how to finish this off. Angle, right here on the rib. Come down, cut through. 
follow through. On this one, same thing. Cut through, and this is that piece. Let's get it out of there. Slice the ball. Let's see how moist that is. And here are rib tips. These pieces here, my doggies love them. I love them too, we all love them. But rib tips, there you go. I do an Asian rib, these are the bomb. Right here. All right, we're gonna cut through these. That's that, look at that. Beautiful rib. Look at that, beautiful. Let's see if I can get some autofocus going on here. New camera. So, there you go, right there. Look at that juice. Let's take a bite out of that. See that? Good color. Perfect. That's pit master privilege right there. Two bites. All right, let's get this plated out and I'll meet you back. I'll see you in a second. All right, that's it. Chicken and ribs. You like it? Nail that button for me, guys. Thank you. And again, I hate to eat in front of you, but this is Pitmaster Privilege right here.